Hello, everyone, and welcome to Birds of the World. The world is so big, and there are so many different people in it. But one thing that seems to be a common trend among countries is that people want to have a national symbol or a national bird that says different things about them. But we're going to go around the world and see every national bird in the world. Get ready, because there's a lot of them, and they tell a lot of interesting stories. We're going to start in North America with Canada. Canada does not have a national bird. Instead, they have an unofficial national bird, the Canada Jay. That's pictured here, and I've denoted that it's unofficial by putting it in black and white. There was a contest in 2015 by Canadian Geographic to vote for a national bird, but only 50,000 people in the entire country, or about 0.1% of the population, voted in this contest. And the government took the results and ignored them. So Canada continues to have no national bird over 150 years after its existence as a country. The United States, on the other hand, wasted almost no time getting an official national bird. The bald eagle was selected as the U.S. national bird in 1782, before the Constitution was even ratified. The United States was working on their official seal. The design of this seal wasn't an obvious choice, and the seal went through three committees before going to a guy who decided to use a bald eagle in the seal. And that is this seal. Congress liked this one so much that the bald eagle became the official national bird symbol. We're not going to tell long stories about every country because there's a lot to get through, but those two were pretty interesting. Next is Mexico with the golden eagle. And Greenland, being part of Denmark, has the mute swan. Then let's go down to Central America. Belize, the keel-billed toucan. It's really small, but it's, it's there. The keel-billed toucan just barely fits. We have Guatemala with the resplendent quetzal. And Honduras has the scarlet macaw. El Salvador has the turquoise-browed motmot. Again, really small, but there it is. And Nicaragua also has the turquoise-browed motmot. Same bird. Costa Rica has the clay-colored thrush. And Panama has the harpy eagle. Baruba has the prikichi, or brown-throated parakeet. And let's go over to Trinidad and Tobago for the scarlet ibis. Grenada has the Grenada dove. And the island of St. Vincent has the St. Vincent parrot. Dominica has the imperial Amazon. Very beautiful bird. Montserrat has the Montserrat Oriole. Antigua and Barbuda have the magnificent frigate bird. And St. Kitts and Nevis have the brown pelican. And moving north, Anguilla has the Zenaida dove. And the British Virgin Islands have the morning dove. Moving west, Puerto Rico has the Puerto Rican spindalis. The Dominican Republic have the palm chat. Haiti has the Hispaniolan trogon. Jamaica has the Doctor Bird, which I really like that name, and Cuba has the Cuban Trogon. Just south of Cuba, the Cayman Islands have the Grand Cayman Parrot, and the Bahamas have the Flamingo. Then off in the Atlantic, on the island of Bermuda, the Bermuda Petrol is the national symbol, but not officially in legislation. The country of Colombia has the Andean Condor, Venezuela has the beautiful Venezuelan Trupial, and Guyana has the Hoatzin. Ecuador has the Andean condor, and Peru has the Andean cock of the rock. Brazil kind of surprised me because they're a country that has a lot of rainforests and a lot of tropical birds to choose from, but they went with the sabia, or the rufous-bellied thrush. This national bird was chosen in 2002, and it was because the sabia it's a brown bird with a beautiful song that was referenced in a famous poem that has significance in the Brazilian culture. On the other hand, it seems like not everyone, even in the country of Brazil, is aware that this is their national bird. Bolivia has the Andean condor, Paraguay has the bare-throated bellbird, and Uruguay has the southern lapwing. Zoom in so you can see those. Argentina has the Rufus Ornero. That's a bird that makes a nest out of mud, which makes an enclosed space, like an oven. That's how it gets its name. And then in Chile, there's the Andean Condor. St. Helena is so small that it barely registers on this map. But St. Helena has the St. Helena Plover. 
Liberia has the garden bulbul, and Nigeria has the black crowned crane. Angola has the red crested taraco, Namibia has the African fish eagle, Botswana has the cori bustard, which is the heaviest flying bird in the entire world. Then the small kingdom of Eswatini has the purple crested taraco, beautiful bird, and the country of South Africa has the blue crane. Zimbabwe also has the African fish eagle, and Zambia also has the African fish eagle. Uganda has the East African crowned crane, which is a beautiful bird, and Kenya unofficially has the lilac-breasted roller. This bird has beautiful rainbow-colored feathers, but because it's unofficial, it is shown in black and white. And that's it for Africa. The prevalence of national birds in Africa is not nearly what it is in other parts of the world. So Africa is left with the most opportunity if they want to choose good national birds in the future. Zooming in on the Middle East with Israel, the hoopoe. It's a cool insect-eating bird that I really like. And in Palestine, the unofficial national bird is the Palestine sunbird. Jordan, right next door, the Sinai rose finch. And in Iraq, the chucker partridge. And next to them in Iran, the common nightingale. Moving south to the United Arab Emirates, the national bird is the peregrine falcon. And Bahrain, we have to zoom in really closely. We can see Bahrain has the white-eared bulbul. Okay, onward into Asia, Pakistan has the chucker partridge. India has the Indian peacock. Sri Lanka has the Sri Lankan jungle fowl. In Bangladesh, it's locally called Doyel Paki, or the Oriental Magpie Robin. And in Bhutan, there's the common raven. In Myanmar, the gray peacock pheasant is unofficially the national bird. And in Thailand, the Siamese fireback, which is a type of beautiful pheasant. In Cambodia, it's the giant ibis. And in China, it's the red crowned crane. In Mongolia, it's the saker falcon. And probably one of my favorite national symbols, the mythical, non-existent, double-headed eagle in Russia. There was one king for a while that tried a triple-headed eagle, but then they went back to two. Anyway, th uh, that is the unofficial national bird of Russia. In North Korea, the northern goshawk. Look at that eye. And in South Korea, the Korean magpie. In Japan, the green pheasant. And in Taiwan, the Taiwan blue magpie is the unofficial national bird. Moving south to Malaysia, the rhinoceros hornbill. And the extremely small country of Singapore has the crimson sunbird as its unofficial national bird. All right, so let's explore these island countries in southeastern Asia. The Philippines, there's the Philippine eagle. In Indonesia, there's the Javan hawk eagle. And in Papua New Guinea, the Rajiana bird of paradise. In Australia, the unofficial national bird is the emu. And in New Zealand, the official national bird is the kiwi. All right, let's fly over to Europe to see the national birds there. Ukraine, the unofficial national bird is the white stork. In Belarus, the unofficial bird is also the white stork. And in Lithuania, the official national bird is the white stork. Looks like we have the beginning of Team White Stork. In Latvia, it's the white wagtail. In Estonia, it's the barn swallow. In Finland, the unofficial national bird is the whooper swan. And in Sweden, the official national bird is the common blackbird. In Norway, the official bird is the white dipper. <laughs> and going back to Denmark, it's the mute swan. So this is one of my favorite national bird stories out of the entire world. So in 1960, the International Congress for the Protection of Birds, which is now called BirdLife, they called for every country to choose a national bird. And Denmark, immediately that same year, they chose the lark, and they were one of the first 25 countries to choose a national bird during this campaign. But the lark was later deemed too obscure of a choice, and so a TV program had a viewer vote in 1984 to choose the new national bird. 
and just under 5% of the country sent in their votes. The Mute Swan won half of the votes that were cast, and therefore it won the role as National Bird. So this is basically a National Bird that was chosen on a television program. Next, let's go over to Germany with the official National Bird the eagle, but it's not specified which particular type. Traditionally, it's called the golden eagle, so that's what's pictured here, but officially the national bird is just the eagle. In Poland, though, it is specifically the white-tailed eagle. Hungary has the saker falcon. Croatia unofficially has the common nightingale. Serbia has the golden eagle. And Albania also has the golden eagle. So we have the makings of another team golden eagle. The little owl is the unofficial national bird in Greece. And the tiny island nation of Malta has the blue rock thrush. Italy has the Italian sparrow as its national bird. And Austria has the barn swallow. Belgium has the common kestrel. And the Netherlands have the black-tailed godwit as their unofficial national bird. France's unofficial national bird is the Gallic chicken. And I'm going to zoom way in so that you can be ready for Luxembourg appearing with their national bird, the Goldcrest. Speaking of tiny nations with national birds, let's go to Gibraltar, which is so small that you can barely see it on this map. There it is. The Barbary Partridge is the national bird of Gibraltar. So the unofficial national bird of the United Kingdom is the European Robin. But the individual countries within the United Kingdom also have their own national bird. So Wales has the red kite as their official national bird. Scotland has the golden eagle as its unofficial national bird. Next, let's go over to the Republic of Ireland for the Northern Lapwing, which is also an unofficial national bird. Finally, let's go up north to the Faroe Islands with the Eurasian Oyster Catcher as their official national bird. We'll finish off in Iceland with the Gear Falcon. So there it is, the world of national birds. There are all kinds of different stories and histories and symbols in these national birds. You can see there's tons of national birds in the Western Hemisphere. The Americas seem very into national birds. Africa is still getting ready to choose their national birds. Europe has a lot of good choices, and there's still a lot of room to choose in Asia. I was really surprised at how many of the Caribbean islands have their own national birds. I thought that was really cool. It's an unusual sounding tradition. I've been really interested lately in exploring how birds intersect with culture. And one of the ways that really stands out are these national birds. It's not a competition, and it's not for any functional reason, but there is a cultural value that comes from choosing a national symbol. And it doesn't matter whether the symbol is peaceful or aggressive or proud or humble. Birds are part of the stories that we tell ourselves. Thanks for learning about birds this week. If this map ever turns into a poster or something, I'll put a link in the description. You can navigate over to another bird video on this channel, or subscribe as a symbol of your appreciation for birds. Thanks for stopping by this week to learn what makes life awesome.